Zachariah 11. <clears throat> Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedar. That's the judgment. It's kind of weird to explain is that God saying, listen, I'm going to burn you down. Open your doors. Let it happen. How fir tree for the cedar is fallen because the mighty are spoiled. How, O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage is cut down. And those oaks of Bashan, you, you see... Throughout the Bible, they're mentioned in shipping. There is a voice of howling of the shepherds. We talked about that last chapter. Talk about shepherds who don't take care of their sheep. For their glory is spoiled in the voice of roaring of young lions. For the pride of Jordan is spoiled. There's that pride again, and there's catastrophe. Nothing ever ends good with pride. For thus saith the Lord my God, Feed the flock of the slaughter. Now here's a flock of sheep, and they're being butchered. And God says to feed them. This is the same commission that Peter gets from Jesus, feed my sheep. Three times. Who processors slay them. Those that own them are the ones that slain them. And hold themselves not guilty. Uh, it's not my fault. And again, we can bring this up to pastors in the churches today where, okay, you, you brought them into the church. There is a salvation. And then they fall away because you don't care about them. You give them goat message every Sunday morning. Goat feet. You're more interested in bringing more in rather than taking care of the sheep you have right now. There is no genuine care for the sheep. I've heard pastors in this life to see in church age witness the pastor say, Oh, I don't counsel them. They that sell them say, selling the sheep. Blessed be the Lord. Happiness is from God. I sold the sheep. For I am rich. Isn't that one of the charges the lad to see in church age? False. I am rich and have need of nothing. God said, No, you're, you're miserable, naked, poor. And their own shepherds pity them not. I, I throughout my lifetime, I have I have cared for the sheep. I I've got a, a prayer book here with names in them, and every once in a while I go through those names, and I'll go up to the pastor of the church, and say, you know, listen, I'm not trying to get no gossip or anything. What happened to this person? What happened to this family? Well, I don't know. We had a falling out one time at a church. I still feel the pastor was wrong. I made my amends. He didn't make his twice. but And his thing was when my wife and I left the church was, well, I thought you fell off the earth. You have my phone number? Well, you shouldn't act like that. You shouldn't act like you acted. You see, the problem with these pastors today, they're the high and mighty, don't touch not the Lord's anointing. That's not you. <laughs> and you're so quick to go about, you know, you're to treat me and all that. Maybe you're not God's call. 
Not with some of the things you do, not with some of the things you say. And their own shepherds pity them not. We are in a messed up church age today. The, the sheep, we got the greatest pastor. You don't realize your pastor is devouring you. He's not feeding you. He's not giving you that which is right. And then when somebody comes along and starts saying, this is right, this is what you, oh, no, no. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land. That's God speaking. Saith the Lord. They didn't pity the sheep, and God said, Okay, I ain't going to pity you. You're going to reap what you sow. But lo, I will deliver the men, everyone into his neighbor's hand, in the hand of the king, and that shall smite the land out of thy hand, I will not deliver them. They've been delivering the sheep. They've been selling the sheep out. Now this is not Babylon. Babylon's already over with. We're going to see a future in Zechariah 11. And I will feed the flock of slaughter. Even you, O poor of the flock. This guy says, listen, I'm going to take care of you. And we're coming up to a time of the tribulation. We're coming up to the first advent. And the condition of Israel, not the Christians, the condition of Israel is this puking. They don't even recognize their Messiah. And when the Messiah shows up, they want a one-sided Messiah. We want the conquering Messiah. We don't want the suffering Messiah. Even I've got to learn, sometimes you've got to suffer to get the victory. And who wants to suffer? And I took on to me two staves. These are the poles of a shepherd. And I called one beauty, and I called the other bands, and I, I fed the flock. I don't know who this beauty and bands are, and I read the commentaries, and they don't know either. We're going to read it, see what happens. Three shepherds also I cut off in one month. Well, we've been talking about shepherds and not taking care of the sheep. God steps in with these with with beauty and bands and takes over for the sheep that have not been fed but been slaughtered. It, it, what's happened is you got sheep and you can use them for their wool and you can feed them and, and get them healthy, but what you're doing is you're taking a fork and a knife and you're stabbing them and you're cooking them. It's not the intention, what God wants you to do. So there are three shepherds. Who are they? I don't know. In one month, God's going to cut them off. You were in trouble when you're cut off. My soul, God's soul, loathe them. God is love. God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. Okay, what about the three shepherds? What does it say? I would take to the count is with ink, which you say that he hates these three shepherds. These three shepherds are probably sinners. God hates the shepherds. I think you can take God hates the sin and loves the sinner. I think you can take that and put it in the shredder I got over here. You see, you know what Christians do today? Oh, I got a good saying. We'll put it on the plaque and we'll sell it at the store. And we'll make Pretty little things that we can put on our Facebook. 
Stolly comes along, he takes Bible verses and puts them on his Facebook. Well, we put little kind of little things. And we got we got Bible verses, partial. As for me and when my house we're gonna serve the Lord. Meanwhile, while you're serving other gods, which is the context with Joshua said. Joshua was talking about other gods. He said, as for me and my family, we're gonna serve Jehovah. They're serving other gods. We're going to serve, we're going to, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the God. All right, we're not going to Sunday school. We're not going to church. We're going to Mickey Rat Run. Yay, Dad, yay. We're not going to midweek service because Sally's got ballet. Yay. But we're going to serve the Lord. You're a liar. And their soul also abhorreth me. I hate them, and they hate me. Everybody just loves Jesus. If you haven't had a public ministry at all, I've knocked on doors, I've preached on streets, I handed gospel tracts out. Let me ask you, uh, handing out gospel tracts. When you go into your local Walmart, do they look for you? They look for me. There's one specific way I hand out gospel tracts. I will turn around and there's a person with a blue vest <laughs> smiling back at me, shaking her head like, no. When I check out a Walmart, if they recognize me, there are three blue vests that run over to where I was checking out. Because I have been evangelistic. Then said I, God, I will not feed you. You feed the sheep? I'm not going to feed you. What man's got to realize, even the Christian spiritualizing today for the Christian, you're going to reap what you sow, and only God's mercy do you not get all the crops. That, that diet, you got to read that slowly, that, that diet, let it die. This is God speaking. If you're not going to feed the sheep, I'm not going to feed you. Go ahead and die. Remember what God told Jeremiah? Don't even pray for them. That's not your modernistic Baptist church today, along with your your mega church. And I said Baptist church. Oh, your Baptist church, God's oozy goozy. It's not my God to say that. That's the God of the Old Testament. And that, that is to be cut off. Let it be cut off. And we're all famous about the 99, and that one that God goes after, that one lost sheep. God says, hey, listen, that, 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 that shepherd, he gets lost? Good. Let me go get, no. Leave them alone. And let the rest eat every one the flesh of one of another. <laughs> let the shepherds dine and feast on their own selves. I think you'll probably call that a pastor's fellowship. You know, the, the great pastors, or oh, our pastors going to a pastor's fellowship, and when they go to the hotels, listen, I've been told, I, I've been part of this thing. I've heard the words. The prostitutes are bought. The pastors rent out the triple X movies. They pay for it themselves at the checkout. You got a bunch of pastors in the bar. With other pastors. And they sit there and brag and boast about, oh, we had 16 in our church. We had 18 say, I had 100 in, in, in Sunday school. We had 200 at our revival meeting. We had blah, 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 blah. Heads, bows, eyes closed so you can't see yourself being counted in our church. 
I took my staff, even beauty. These are instruments of shepherds. And cut it asunder. Didn't say cut off. He cut it asunder. That I may break my covenant, which I made with all the people, Israel. And it was broken in that day. Pay attention to those three words. That's using the tribulation. That's using judgment. Advent. So the poor of the flock that waited upon me knew that it was the word of the Lord. You know which Jews are going to be hiding out at a place prepared, Revelation 12. Those are waiting on God and waiting on Jehovah, <coughs> waiting on the, the Messiah. What's Revelation 19 say? And his name is called the Word of the Lord. He had a name that no name knew. Listen, by the time the Antichrist comes into power within his realm, when the mark of the beast happens in the churches, <coughs> excuse me, the church is long gone. There is no middle class. You're either rich by the mark. Or you're poor by not receiving the mark. And the book of James written to the twelve tribes scattered aboard is, re is, re is reaching out in condemnation to the rich. Because if you're rich in the tribulation, you are a sinner. You have taken the mark. And you are an enemy of Israel. And who they're waiting for, the word of the Lord, Revelation 19. Let's, let's look at that, Revelation 19. So you make sure and know that I'm not lying to you, because many Christians are not going to check the scriptures out. Look at Revelation 19.11. Just, and I'm not going to, because I don't know. But look at Revelation 19.11. I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon it was called... Faithful and true. Verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. Well, guess who's waiting for him? Back to Zechariah. The Jews. Verse 12. How do we know this? Because evidently the Jehovah Witnesses don't know this. And I said unto them, If you think good, give me my price. And if not, forbear. Don't do it. So they weighed for my price 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter. A goodly price. 30 pieces of silver was a goodly price. That it was praised at them, or of them, excuse me. And I took the 30 pieces of silver. Now, now what? I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast it to the potter in the house of the Lord. We are in the temple. Matthew 27. Let's look into what we're reading. Because I'm not going to speculate. I'm not scholarly enough. Matthew 27, 9. Then what was filled was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, not written. Don't go looking for it in Jeremiah. 
Don't go find the second book of Jeremiah, the third book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah the epistle, Jeremiah the God. No, it says spoken. The Holy Spirit that is with the children of God says, Jeremiah said this. He didn't write it. People, uh, I read the book of Enoch. Well, you know, it says over there with was Jude that Enoch prophesied. It said he prophesied. It didn't say he written anything. Or, you know, I read the book of Jabez. Four verses, or three or four verses? You wrote an entire book in prayer of Jabez? Next, you're going to build the entire ark of three verses in the Bible. And charge people cash, check, for money order, and ride in the elevators up and down. <laughs> And they took the 30 pieces of silver, also read in Zechariah. So the 30 pieces of silver is found in Jeremiah's tongue, Zechariah's book, Matthew, we're reading one place. The price of him that was valued. And it says in Zechariah, stay where you are. They weighed my price. <coughs> Whom they of the children of Israel did value. Well, who are the sheep? The church. No. There is no church. In John chapter 10, when Jesus speaks about the sheep, and he speaks about he's the good shepherd. You're changing scriptures. You're writing the scriptures to say what you want to say. Next you'll say, all these earthquakes and all this thing is the time of the Antichrist and abomination that spoke in desolation while we're still in the church age. Great error. For the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. Now, Zechariah says, stay where you are. Zechariah says, cast it onto the potter. And they gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. Okay? Go back to verse 5. Actually, verse 4. Very important. Verse 3, then Judas, which betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented of himself. See, he repented, but he still went to hell because he didn't go to Jesus, he went to the priests and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. I think maybe things would have changed if Judas would have gone to Jesus on the cross. What do you think it happened if Judas would have knelt at the cross of Jesus and said, Jesus, I am sorry, I'm guilty. I'm guilty, Jesus. I'm guilty. You think Jesus would have turned him away? No. Why didn't Judas get saved? Why didn't he go to heaven? Because he didn't go to Jesus, he went to the priest. Why are many people going to go up to hell? They don't go to Jesus, they go to the priest. Saying, I have sinned. Oh, look at that. There are many people going to a Baptist church. They go into a, a revival meeting. I have sinned. And they still die and go to hell. Because they said a prayer. They didn't. They, they, they went to the pastor. They went to the deacons. They went to the ushers. But they didn't go to Jesus. I have betrayed the innocent blood. Salvation with no blood. Is no salvation at all, but Judas did not go to the one that shed his blood. You see how close Judas came? He repented. He confessed his sin. He declared the innocent blood, but he went to the wrong people. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to it. 
and he cast down the, the pieces of silver in the temple, in the temple, and departed and went and hanged himself. So back to Zechariah. It says, verse 12, If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price, Jesus, 30 pieces of silver. They gave it to Judas. And the Lord said unto me, Cast it unto the potter. That's not Judas. Matthew tells us Judas cast it at the, the chief priests and the elders and went and hung himself. The chief priests and elders pick up the money and they say this is money of blood which you pay for. And we read they gave it to the potter. And they bought a potter's field which they used to bury poor people. Who told them to do that with the money? And the Lord said unto me, cast it unto the potter. That's not what Judas did. That's what the chief priest did. A goodly price that was praised at, of them, them, the chief priest, and I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast it to the potter in the house of the Lord. That we just read that in Matthew, the temple. We've got the first advent. We just read, I believe, is the tribulation period. Before the advent. They didn't rightly divide. Your Baptist churches today don't rightly divide. All right, so we're not done yet. Then I cut asunder my other staff, even bands, that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. The brotherhood of Judah and Israel was broken with Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And they had never been the same till present. And they're not going to be the same until Jesus brings them in the land. If I am properly trying to, to evaluate the word of God and rightly dividing, we've got the tribulation period, we've got the first advent, we got Judas collecting 30 pieces of silver, throwing them down. We got the, the high priest paying for the potter's field for, for poor people to be buried. And we've got Jeroboam and Rehoboam split in the nation of Israel. I am not going to tell you who that beauty and bands are, but I don't know who they are. You say, well, beauty is Jesus. Isaiah said at the first advent of Jesus, there is no beauty that we should desire him. I could throw something else out there, but I don't know if it is. I don't know. So we'll keep on reading. Now, let's pick up 15, 16, and 17. You want to have fun? <clears throat> you enjoy the book of Revelation? 15, 16, 17. Oh, I don't read the Old Testament. Let's read 15, 16, 17. We'll read it all as one, I hope. The Lord said unto me, this is God speaking. Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. We've been talking about shepherds. Pastors are not taking care of the flock. You know what God says about a pastor of a church today that doesn't take care of God's people? You're a foolish shepherd.
And what, what are the instruments of a foolish shepherd? Well, as far as the church age, well, you know, pews, a good building. We're going to sing just as I am to somebody walks to this altar, the altar. We're going to pass the, 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 the plate around. We're rich with goods. We have no need of nothing. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land Israel. All right, there's a shepherd coming up in the land of Israel by God. And he's a foolish shepherd. The, and here's a clue. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. In the land of Israel, God's going to raise a shepherd. 15, 16, 17. Which shall not visit those that have been cut off. He's not going to visit the Jews. The sheep of God. And we read about already in this chapter... There are shepherds out there already who, who are likened to the Antichrist. Uh-oh, I just told you who this guy is. That the Antichrist is not going to care anything for Israel. Like the shepherds we just read about, they don't care anything about Israel. So the Apostle John writes in the second epistle, there are Antichrists, plural. There are pastors of churches in the Lazacene, well, other churches, but the Lazacene churches, there are pastors of churches out there, great pastors, there, and they are foolish. They don't care about the sheep. Instead of feeding the sheep like they should, they have other plans for Sunday night. And as far as the word of God, they may have another version. Or version. Other versions of Bibles is an instrument of a foolish shepherd. Cut off are, are people who are... Now this cutoff is not the cutoff you're going to hell. This cutoff, if it's the Antichrist in the tribulation period, we'll, we'll look at the scriptures in a moment. What's the cutoff here? No man might buy or sell unless he received the mark of, or the name or the number of the beast in his forehead or his right hand. That's not set by God. Now, a proper Jew, especially of those of the Orthodox who want to do what the law tells them to do, because they're in the law, they can't receive that mark, they can't receive that image, they can't receive that number, they can't receive that name. The law forbids it. Now, I'm not talking about the cardinal Jewish person. So the Jewish person in the tribulation period who wants to do Jehovah right, is cut off by the world. And the Antichrist is like, I don't care. Bring me their blood. Kill them. Reward, dead or alive, Jews. And neither shall seek the young ones. And they came out, when I forgot to say, they came out with this, these movies about the tribulation period, how they're going to get a computer and beat all that. And the thing is, what about the children? And a lot of things where, you know, the mother's got the baby, goes up to the hospital, and they turn the mother away. Oh, what about the children? Antichrist don't give a poo -poo. Listen, this thing with the abortions in America and that today, that's just a prelude to the to the Antichrist. You don't want it? Get rid of it. 
And that's the founding of your Catholic president, Joseph Biden. And the, the Roman Catholic says, go ahead, get rid of it. We'll make it legal. We'll give you funding. We don't care about the young ones. We're getting you ready for the Antichrist. Hey! Hey! You, you're Jewish and you had a baby, you can't take care of all that? Just drop it off some, somewhere and we'll eat it. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. You think I'm full of it? You think I'm full of it? Watch this. There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon, under her feet. That's not Mary. Upon her head, a crown of twelve stars, as the nation of Israel, according to Joseph. Abraham, or Abram, came out from a moon city of Ur of Chaldees. Ur of Chaldees was a moon city. Look it up. <coughs> Excuse me for a cough. She, Israel, being, being with child, cried and travailed birth, and pain and to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Now let's run down to, run down to, let me find it here real quick. Look at verse 9. The great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Oh, gee, I think we know who that is now. So there appeared another wonder in heaven, a great red dragon, China. Dungeon and Dragons. Puff the Magic Dragon. I don't know if there's any dragons in Harry's books or anything. Be careful, but church brings in a cute little dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns, seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of stars, the unholy angels, did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman Israel, which was ready to devour, I mean, to be delivered, excuse me, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Give me that child, eat him. And she brought forth a man child, not Jesus, who shall rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And the child was caught up into God and his throne. And the woman fled in the wilderness, that's Israel, where, where she had a place prepared of God, could be so Petra. Okay, back to Zechariah. You gotta read all the Bible. So neither seek ye the young one. Let me ask you a question. Can you spell that one? Is it O-N-E or is it O-N-E-S? Revelation 12 said, A son. Did you get the two verses? Don't mess with the words or words in the Bible. King James. Nor heal that is broken. We got the United Healthcare. No, we don't, but got United Healthcare. Not in the tribulation period, you don't. We got a hospital over here. You get involved in auto wreck. And they call 911, and the ambulance and all, and the ambulance shows up. The ambulance is going to say, check his right hand, there's his. You, you see the mark? No mark. Leave him. But he's going to die. Leave him. Oh, come on, they're not going to do that. Michigan, a thousand nurses just walked off the job. Not because they want more pay. They want you to take care of the patients better. I know someone who told me, Works in a healthcare place, they can't even get enough soap to wash the patients. 
I know I know someone works in a healthcare place. Oh, they got they got a whole bunch of COVID patients together. Really? What did they do? They put them in one room. I I got I got someone else who told me that work works in a healthcare center, but the guy kept falling. Kept falling on the floor. What did they do? Just leave them. What's the next step? Does he have the mark? No. Leave him. You know, there are pastors in churches. There are people who have been cut off from their family because they got saved. There have been people cut off from the world. They've lost their job for their standing. Oh. You're fanatical. You, you don't fit in this church. Oh, they seek the young one to give them carnality, to give them fun, to give them entertainment, to give them the world, to give them carnality. Da, 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 da. Uh, my sister, she had a while back, she took my nieces and nephews to a church. Oh, my. And what pictures get? It was all face painting carnivals. And he didn't take them to church. He took them to a circus. And heal that which is broken. How many Christians have left the, and I know I see the Facebook, if, if, if you left the church because you're because somebody offended you and the pastor offended you, uh, you, you left for the wrong, you don't know what, how vicious those Christians are. I had Christians tell me as a widow, why don't you just stop it and just get over it. Have you had anybody here, here die? No. You don't have to be talking like that. You don't have to be acting like that. Have you had it happen to you? No. Then you need to shut up. Especially in these mega churches. It amazes me today how these churches, even the little ones now, they got a pastor, senior pastor, and associate pastor. For eight people? And then one pastor told me, well, I'm going to have him come down this way to visit people in the hospital. Uh, it's too far for me. What else is more important in your time to visit the sheep that have been broken? I know that there are some pastors that don't even go visit their sheep in the hospital. I know some pastors, they won't talk to you about your marriage. Be Go pay a Christian counselor. Nor feed that which standeth still. I said, I was in the church every Sunday morning. I give them, I give them a salvation message. I give them a goat feed. Those that are lost are goats. I feed them goat feed. The sheep need feet, sheep feed. You don't keep giving sheep. You gotta be saved. You gotta be saved. Jesus saved. Jesus saved. Yeah, that's good. If you're a goat. <laughs> and they're standing because you know what? They don't know where to go and how to go and what to do. So what they do is they've been taught. Vitamin, vitamin, vitamin from the world of sin. You can't be changed. Jesus says, go out in the world and tell them, preach to them the gospel. Jesus suffered and died and was buried and rose again the third day according to the scripture. There's nothing there about inviting the church. Paul didn't invite the church. Peter didn't invite the church. James didn't invite them to the church. They gave them the gospel. Was it Barnabas or, or Apollos? One of those was was a little weird on their scriptures. Priscilla and Aquilius, is that their names? Brought him to church. No, they took him aside and they taught him more excellency. Friend, let me tell you by a swindler. If you put all your bad strawberries in the bottom of the crate, when you get up in the morning, you, you, your 
your table is going to be red. Your strawberries are going to go bad. That's what's wrong with the churches today. They keep on going. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat. The Antichrist is going to have what do you call it? How do I say it? He's going to have the mass and he's going to have actual Jewish bodies and Jewish blood. The Jews that are killed, they're going to eat that body and drink that blood. Revelation chapter 12. I mean, the, the, the Catholics would tell you, it is the literal body and blood of Jesus. It is the literal Jewish body and Jewish blood. In the tribulation period, it will be literal. Not the blood and body of Jesus. We can't say that name. It will be the literal body and blood of Hebrews. Why? Because the Hebrew law says you're not to eat and drink blood. Right now, <coughs> in the Catholic Church, in the Lutheran Church, in other churches. It's, though they say it's real, it's actually figurative. It's not. But their proclamation, the magic hookie pookie, it is the literal body and blood. In the tribulation period, it will. And since Jesus came onto his own, we'll take the own of Jesus. We'll take the Jewish body. We'll take the Jewish blood. And we'll eat and drink that as our mass. Because we're not going to do it to Jesus. Because we're worshiping Satan now. And tear their claws in pieces. I don't know if sheep have claws. I don't. But let's move on. <clears throat> so foolish is shepherd, verse 15. 17, woe. Revelation says, woe. 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 First woe. Second woe. Three woe. I don't like the Old Testament. I like the book of Revelation. And when you get your book of Revelation in your church, you're not going to get Zechariah. You're not going to get Exodus. I, be, I was in the church. That pastor comes in. We do it. We do a chapter every Sunday. And we got to Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 6. Since the Sunday school teacher didn't know what he was talking about. Thanks to Stiley. Well, we're going to complete Judges now. We're done. Because this is repetition. I got witnesses. And we went to another book. And then he got up there next week and a couple weeks after that. We've gone through the whole Bible. Liar, liar, your pants on fire. I'm sorry. Woe to the idol shepherd. That's I-D-O-L. He has an idol. And at the sound of the shot book, you know, those musical instruments, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, if you don't bow down before my golden image, you're going into the fire. The Babylon pagan god. Is coming back in the tribulation period. So well the pagan gods of the Baptist churches today that those who miss the miss the rapture are hey. We were doing that in that Baptist church before those people left. I didn't know her name was Esther. I didn't know his name was Tame. I remember somebody saying something like that, but 
We drove him off. Okay, we'll keep on going. Idol shepherd. That's the Antichrist. And he's raised up by God, verse 16. We'll, I'll show you in a moment. And he's a foolish shepherd, and he doesn't care for the sheep. So listen to me. If you've got a pastor of your church, I don't care what he said. If his actions is he don't care about that sheep in that church of his congregation, he's a type of Antichrist. And John says there are Antichrists. He may be in your pulpit. And you could think he's the great, is all great. The world's going to think the Antichrist is great of all great, and he's deceived them. I, I was in the church. We got a great pastor here. I said, well, what about Jesus? Oh, yeah, him too. I raised a ruckus the other day. Uh, Donald Trump's son is... Donald Trump's done more for Christianity. Uh, what about Jesus? Donald Trump doesn't even know what Christianity is. He said Jesus. So did I when I was lost, and I didn't. I proclaimed Jesus Christ, and I wasn't even saved. I can tell you that Roman Catholic who who, who supports abortions. On Easter, said, God bless everybody in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus we celebrate now. And to the Jewish people, happy Passover. As we celebrate Good Friday, the, the, the death of Jesus, as I've heard a Baptist wife proclaim that Jesus died on Good Friday. Now, we come to the conclusion, we can say Jesus and please the multitude and not even know what we're saying. I'll keep on moving. Okay? That leaveth the flock. Now, that's not the pastor that leaves, though it can be. That's You know what? He lets the flock go. One went away. Oh, well, who cares? We just lost the whole family. She, yeah, but they were a pain in the butt. We lost two sheep. Yeah, but he was King James only and all that. Now you leave my people alone. You know what Pharaoh said when he, when he finally kicked Israel out? Maybe he'll save us. He lets them go. You know what a pastor said? I thought you fell off the earth. Well, you really care for us. By the way, what happened to you? Oh, I retired out of the ministry. Really? I'm not going to go into details, but that was it? How about the family you ran off because you... Never mind. How about this other family you ran off because... Oh, yeah, never mind. How about when you sat behind your desk and you told me, touch not my lord? I was young then. I was lucky I didn't know nothing then. Just let him go. All right, move on. The sword shall be upon his arm. Upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean, dried up, dead. Lifeless. And his right eye shall be utterly darkened, blind. I would assume the same right arm that you're going to have people take the mark, which hasn't happened yet. Well, how do you know that? Because Revelation. Who are you on Revelation? Oh, boy. Thirteen. <coughs> Eighteen. I got bad in me. So let me. I got to this one up. Hold on. 
because I can't write very well. Thirteen. Thirteen three. <clears throat> Verse one. Thirteen one. I stood upon the sand of the sea, men a train, and it saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. It's not going to be a U.S. president, and no, it's not going to be King Charles. They're not on the Mediterranean Sea. I've already got King Charles the Third. He's the Antichrist. Will you please read your Bible? Upon his horn, ten crowns. Okay, verse three. <clears throat> Well, look at verse 2. And the beast I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet were feet of a bear. His mouth of a mouth of a lion. Uh oh And the dragon gave him power. Well, we saw who the dragon was. This beast, this Antichrist, gets his power from Satan. Okay, verse 3. I saw one of his heads as it, wound, as it were wounded to death. Right arm, right eye. And his deadly wound was healed. He was wounded to death and he was healed. He was resurrected Antichrist. And all the world wondered at the beast. They don't care about Jesus. Verse 12. Verse 11. I could read the whole book of Revelation. I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. Out of the, not out of the sea, the earth. This is the false prophet. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. We, so Many of us believe that's Judas. Hi guys. Well, let me tell you, it wasn't Jesus. It was me. I spent three and a half years with that man. Let me tell you the truth. Keep reading. And he exercised all the power of the first beast, the Antichrist, before him. And causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, the Antichrist, whose deadly wound was healed, resurrection. And he does great wonders that make his fire come down out of heaven on the earth in the sight of men. He's got to be Pentecostal. Flaming tongues coming from heaven. Look at verse 14. And deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of the miracles. Which he powered to do in the sight of the beast, Antichrist. Saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image, idol shepherd, to the beast, Antichrist. Which had the wound by a sword, Zechariah, and did live resurrection. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That image, unlike Nebuchadnezzar's image, Welcome to Satan Land. I don't know, maybe I have mouse ears or something. And the image of the beast shall both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. He's not worshiping me. Who? Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. We're back to Babel, even animated. Now watch. He calls all both small and great, Zechariah, rich and poor, Zechariah, no middle class, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or their left forehead. Why their right hand or forehead? Because that's where the that's where the, the Antichrist is injured. 
get the scar like the scar of the Antichrist. Never mind the scars of Jesus. Get it right where the third eye goes. Or get it right in the hand. That no man may buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of the name. Friend, the church is long gone. So in Zechariah chapter 11, we've got beauty and band. I don't know who. You got the first advent talking about Judas. Who many believe is that second beast. Quinky dinky. We've got the idle foolish shepherd which is the Antichrist. The first beast. Who is injured by his right hand and his eye and killed. And comes resurrected. And you got the mark. You can't make a movie out of this. 